So, hey, welcome, everybody. Um, if we haven't met, I think I've met most of you. My name is John Dahl, and I am the, I get to work with the Calvary Partner Network here out of Calvary and Alexandria. And we just, we're, we just love doing these webinars because we get to talk about um, just very real things that we deal with each and every month, each and every week. Um, and it's just stuff that, that we've learned uh, here at Calvary that if we just talk about these things and have a group of people that we can just be working with together, um, that we're just better together. Well, so we'll introduce today's um, webinar. So we're super excited to have Katie Dahl uh, running this webinar. She is just a machine behind the scenes here at Calvary and does a really good job um, just with strategy and how do we just be intentional about welcoming people into our church um, and the tips and the tricks and the things that we can do. Um, so I'll kick it over to Katie Dahl. Thanks, Katie. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for letting me kick this off with you. So um, just a quick little tidbit to introduce myself. I have worked at Calvary since 2015 and I serve as the director of engagement and that's a new role for me. Um, I work with um, uh, our digital and print communications with Kate who's on this call. And then I also get to work with uh, other types of active engagement. So how do we keep people engaged um, in a lot of different ways if they're new or if they've been here for a while. So today, um, my hope, just so you can have a little bit of what to expect, um, we're going to talk about five things that we think um, can really help enhance church, your church's hospitality. And then we'd love to have some conversation at the end with you. If you have other ideas or questions, we can do um, a little bit of dreaming together at the end. So I'm going to start with a quick story, an anecdote. Um, we have some friends who told us, um, this was a few years back, about their experience of visiting a church. Um, and they told us it was, it was so memorable, it stuck in their heads. They got to church. And they walked in, they were new to town, and they introduced themselves to the pastor. And these were people who were, you know, been to church a lot. Um, they introduced themselves to the pastor and the pastor said, hey, nice to meet you. The bathrooms are over there and then walked away. And they contend that that is one of the reasons they chose not to go back to that church because the first impression that they had was um, pretty robotic and not as welcoming as they might have might have hoped. And I lead with that because I think that first impressions really do matter. Um, I never thought I could see myself in a role like this at a church thinking so much about how we welcome people. Um, but I love to come at every staff meeting, bring up um, reasons why we have to start thinking about what people experience when they come to church. So um, I think also it's important because in this day and age, we can't deny that we live in a Google review world, right? Like people, uh, whether we like them to or not, look to reviews or ask their friends what they experience in restaurants or at stores. And so I think there's a pretty strong case to make that the church has to pay attention to those tendencies and anticipate what people experience. So, um, let's dive in a little bit. So as I think about, you know, five ways that churches might enhance, um, your hospitality strategy, number one is acknowledge that the sermon starts in the parking lot. And I remember hearing that phrase once, I don't know if it was in seminary or at some other point. And I remember kind of rolling my eyes thinking, well, that's a little ridiculous. Why would we, why would we think about that? What does the parking lot have to do with church? Um, and I've really changed my perspective on that. And I think in part because, um, if you think about your experience of going somewhere new, you size up the situation from the minute you get there, right? You're wondering um, how are people going to um, welcome me or what, what can I expect when I walk in? What am I going to see? Who am I going to see? And so I think if we as the church think about the sermon starting in the parking lot, it changes our perspective on, on lots of things. Um, it, it, you know, you think we just finished registering our uh, kids for middle school and high school, which is a little bit wild. Um, but as I think about it, you know, we get lots of emails as parents, like, okay, your kids can expect to go in this door. Um, when you come, we'll give you a tour so that they know where their class is. They know where, um, parents, you know where your kids are going to be. So this is where they'll, they'll be spending the next several years of their life. And I hope, I think, if we think about the church in a similar way, it helps people feel a little more at ease. So the, the sermon starting in the parking lot, in my mind, really means um, the way people feel welcome influences the way that they hear the gospel that's being proclaimed when they actually come to worship. And so um, how, do we, how do we prepare for people in a way that really is radical? Um, 
And I, I heard once um, an image that explained it this way that really stuck out at me. When we're preparing someone to come to your home, if you know you're having dinner guests, you, um, you clean the house, you set the table, you plan the meal, and you, you welcome them at the door, you think through all of the scenarios for when they come. You don't just uh, throw something together from your leftovers container um, when they come, when, you're, when you know that they're a guest. So what if in the church, we thought of people as our guests rather than just visitors who might show up um, unexpected? What if all we were always preparing for them to come? So I think those images of preparing for guests and thinking about how we welcome them, standing at the front door, pulling the door open with a trained greeter who's saying, hello, welcome to church. That can really influence the way that they experience church. So number one, acknowledge that the sermon starts in the parking lot. Okay. Number two, recognize that new people are in the room. And at Calvary, we talk about that a lot because um, we wanna normalize people thinking about new visitors and new guests. Um, I think sometimes, um, and I'm guilty of this too, the church mentality that the people who are there are always the people who are going to be there. And sometimes if we embody that, if we like, if we live that reality, that's the self-fulfilling prophecy that we're going to experience. But instead, if we think about knowing and expecting that they're always going to be new people, it changes the attitude, not just of our staff, but of our worshipers. So um, for us, the way that's looked is we, every single worship service, even a Lenten noon service that we had yesterday, we acknowledge that there might be new people. And, you know, we're the size of church now where we, we don't know everybody. Um, maybe you're in a smaller church and you think you know everybody, but don't, ex don't assume that. Um, just starting to just talk about, hey, if there are new people, people here, we're so glad you have chosen to worship with us today. Um, and just naming that, I think, is a mindset thing, but it also normalizes it for people. Um, it's, it's a little bit different. When Hans and I were first engaged, we went and visited his grandmother's church, which is a very tiny church. And at that point, they like wrote up a news, a thing in the newspaper, if there was anybody who visited town or church together, you know, and I don't know if you've been in small towns like that. So this isn't quite to that level of, um, of welcoming people uh, and making them stand up and say where they're from, but acknowledging that they're there, I think really does make a huge difference. Um, being conscious also of churchy language we might use. That's another thing that we try to be really conscious of. We welcome new people. And by always having that hat on of who is new that's in the room, it causes us to really over explain things. Um, how, do you, how do you experience communion? That might be something that somebody doesn't necessarily know if they're brand new. So explaining that everybody is welcome at our communion table might be something that makes a brand new person feel a little bit more at ease. Because we also want to acknowledge it's a big deal for somebody to, to choose to come to church. We don't want to um, overstate that fact. Um, the fact that they took their time to come to church and uh, take time out of their day could have been a really big step for somebody. So acknowledging that. And then also in, under that umbrella, uh, I'm creating an invitation culture. So I think... Um, uh, you know, I've, I've, I want, if, if there's something I'm really proud of, something I'm really excited about, I want to be able to invite my family and friends. And we want to normalize that. And I think in church settings, we don't often think about inviting people to come with us, to join us, to worship with us. And so we've really been intentional to say, that's a normal thing. We want you to invite people, um, a personal invitation, nothing can beat it. You know, you might see a sign up somewhere and that could nudge you to, try something new or to attend an event, but there's nothing quite like that personal invitation. Um, and once that happens, once there's that culture of invitation, it makes new people feel even more welcome. So I'll, I'll go through these five and then we can come back and we can pipe in um, if you guys have other thoughts to add to those things. But number one, acknowledge the sermon starts in the parking lot. Number two, recognize that new people are in the room. And for us, number three is creating an easy next step for people. Um, I've had a lot of titles in my time here at Calvary. And at one point, my job was director of next steps. Um, and that was really something we were conscious of because we believe that kind of like this next upcoming worship series, that faith is a journey and we want people to have a next step of some sort. 
Um, and so because of that, we also, the same goes for new guests. So for us, that, that means we stand up, um, our pastors will stand up uh, and say, if you're new here, we would love for you to stop by our welcome desk because we've got a gift for you. So we kind of tempt them with a little, a, a teaser um, because people love free stuff. I mean, think about how many times you've seen that there was a free gift at the state fair. How many state fair booths have you walked by just to get that free gift? Um, and I think the same goes for church. You can offer somebody a simple first time guest gift is how we phrase it. Um, and then that causes them to have just a minor, a small interaction with one of our, um, one of our, the people on our hospitality teams. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm so glad you're here. What brought you here? Uh, some conversations might happen along that line. Um, and we will also encourage people to, to leave us their name and their email address and phone number. Um, I think one of the things I've aired on at some points is asking for too much information, but I've learned that people they will be willing to give you just a little bit. And that's all you need. You know, you can follow, uh, follow up with a phone call or email. But rather than asking for a huge connect card right away, that first touch point for someone who's new has to be easy, um, has to be low pressure. Um, I think the other thing that we've really pushed or invited people to is signing up for our email list. That's a simple passive way. So maybe somebody's not comfortable stopping by the welcome desk, but they're new and they're curious. Um, some people will do this on their own. They will stalk you on Facebook a little bit, um, but maybe making that ask really bold and saying, hey, we'd love for you to follow us on social media. That'll give you a great taste for what's going on at the ministry of this place. Um, it also allows them to see other people who might be connected to the church that they didn't know were connected, which then causes them to be more curious. So it's like small little low pressure steps create an easy, low pressure next step is number three. Good. All right. Number four, offer an obvious place to welcome new guests. Um, I mentioned that for us, that's a welcome desk. We have, um, we're lucky that we have a, a new building. We were able to build this into our renovated space so that we had a welcome desk, but it doesn't have to be a fancy place. It could be a table and a sign that you print um, that says new here, stop by. And then if you have a volunteer standing there with an iPad or just information, a smiling face, um, make it really easy and obvious so that the communication from the person up front can be really clear. And that may sound like a really silly little point, but think about the times where you've been somewhere and it's been really confusing. Um, the odds of you just giving up and not seeking out that next step or that person or that thing, whatever it might be, I think are pretty great unless you clearly know where you're supposed to go. So, uh, you know, any, any place that you can create in your Narthex, um, anywhere, I think is an important thing. All right. So number four, offer an obvious place for new guests. And number five is just follow up in a timely manner. Um, for us, that's right now, that's a staff person, that's me. And so I will make a phone call and just say, hey, thank you so much for joining us at Calvary. I, um, I work here and I just wanted to officially welcome you and thank you. And then I will tend to just kind of feel out the person. Um, some people like to give a lot of information. Others are a little surprised that somebody has followed up with them. Um, or in an email, I might say, we would love, and I, or on the phone, I would say, we'd love to have you join us again. Um, sometimes I'll say, we offer a different worship service at this time. If you'd like to check that out, you're welcome to as well, or you can watch online. But just to let people know in a timely manner, hey, we noticed you. Because um, again, think about human nature. We want to be noticed. We all want to feel like we, um, like we connected. I can remember when I was in college, I volunteered at a church. My freshman year, we, my friends and I went to a church and somebody said, oh yeah, we'd love to have you volunteer. And they took my name and nobody ever called me. And I felt like I had done something wrong. Um, like maybe I wasn't, which is silly, right? I they had no reason to, to think that I'm sure it just got mixed, lost in the mix, but you just, you take those things personally when you don't hear from someone, um, if they're asking for your information. So, um, even if it's just a touch point, sometimes I'll get a response that says we were just visiting with our nephew. Um, but we loved your church. And that's a perfect opportunity to say, hey, we'd love to have you join us online. We have a lot of people who worship with Calvary from across the country, if you're ever looking for a church home. Um, we try and make it real comfortable for people. We, don't, we aren't in the business of trying to woo people away from other churches. Um, we, we just wanna make it clear that if you don't have a church home, you're welcome here. Um, so that's something we try really hard to train our volunteers or um, I try to use 
sensitive language like that when I'm following up with people. Um, and it's a way also to lead them to a next step. We offer, we do offer something we call a next steps gathering. Um, and that's just where if people want to get further engaged, um, that's an important thing to offer for people as well. But I find that in the first, this first entry point, as we think about hospitality, um, it's important just to offer people an easy, simple, friendly way um, for them to engage. And if they see that that's the front door of the church, I think they're more likely to come back and engage in other ways. Um, so again, five things. Uh, assume that the sermon starts in the parking lot. Um, number two is recognize new people are in the room. Make an easy way, low pressure next step. Uh, offer an obvious place to welcome new guests and then following up in a timely manner. Um, I have a couple of things I want to show you that just to get some brainstorming going um, that are some things that we've done over the last few years here at Calvary. So let me share my screen with you. All right. So these are just a couple of pictures to show you what we've interpreted hospitality to look like. Um, we have um, a service that we call Calvary at the Lake, which happens at Luther Christ Bible Camp. It's an outdoor worship service each summer. And so a few years ago, we decided to get our volunteers matching t-shirts. And um, I think that's another thing I didn't really talk about, but I think is really helpful to make your volunteers really identifiable um, so that if someone does have a question, they can come and know who to ask. Um, I always tell all of these people on our hospitality teams, you don't have to know the answer. You just have to be a friendly person who's willing to direct them to someone who does know the answer or take their information. Um, we have people in the parking lots with umbrellas. I mean, it's a simple little hospitality thing that's real easy to do um, and just offer them an umbrella as they're walking to church for our outdoor, for our, this was at our outdoor worship service. Um, at that time, we would then move inside for worship. Um, we, we, I tell all of those, all of our volunteers, like pull the door open for people. There's something to be said about that, like feeling of feeling so special when you're coming and the door is being held open for you. Um, we've had people in our parking lots with parking wands. That picture on the right side um, is a parking wand I gave them last year. It looks like a lightsaber that I uh, asked them to just wave people so they knew where they were going. Um, and sometimes just a simple thing like that, letting people know where to go in the parking lot can make people feel like they, they really feel good coming in um, to worship. Um, and then these signs, we order, I found this, this company a couple of years ago that orders these custom signs for us. Um, they have some that they make just for churches. It's actually kind of, it's, it's called pop signs and it's kind of a cool story. These, the people who started this company were volunteers in their church, um, parking team, and they got tired of making new cardboard signs that would get washed out from the rain every week. So they founded this company that creates these sturdier plastic signs. Um, and they sell them to a lot of different businesses, but they, they especially market them to churches. Um, and so Kate, our communication specialist has created a lot of custom signs for us over the past year. And we really take advantage of them. Like somebody holding a sign. I know you see that on, was it progressive insurance commercials right now where the guy's flipping the sign. Um, but it does, it sticks out to people and it's, it's something that they notice when they're arriving. It makes them feel really welcome. I think. So the other, I have one more slide to show you. And John, I forgot how I do this to move to the next one. I don't stop the share. I Yeah, hover right above it. It should say share or new share maybe. And just click on share again and it'll pop up. Okay, new share. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Nope. Let me try that again. Three. Nope. There we go. Let's try that one. All right, I'm gonna try that again because that's not working. So share the screen. There we go. Oh, that's the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so this is yep, just another example uh, I wanted to show you. Um, we, uh, I, I think I, I didn't have as much appreciation for hospitality as I did once we started offering or uh, asking greeters to serve at our vacation Bible school. So if you look at the picture where the little girl in the yellow shoes is jumping, um, we asked our men's Bible study who was just there anyway for Bible study to come a little bit um, early 
or stay late, I can't remember, and be greeters for our Vacation Bible School. And I tell you, anybody can give a high five. And to see an old guy give a little kid a high five, um, it just changed the tone of everything we did. And so we had this tunnel of high fives welcoming people to Vacation Bible School. And um, a couple of years ago, I had um, a person who goes to another church. She just would bring her kids to VBS here. And she said, there is nothing like a welcome at Calvary in VBS. And I took that as the highest compliment ever. Um, so ask people to be high fivers. You know, that maybe it's just a person who uh, that's their job is to give fist bumps or something at, at the door when they come. That's an easy way to welcome people. Um, the sign, like you see on the right, that was just an easy way um, to get a not so permanent sign. You know, you, we got a Thrive in Action team actually to get that sign holder. Um, so we used it for something like a blood drive that was being held here. And so we used a little bit of um, external money to get the sign itself. And then we purchased some of those other signs to slip inside of them that just say welcome. Um, set, simply setting a sign out at your main entrance um, just lets people know where to go. Even if it feels obvious to you, we're always asking ourselves what should we expect from people who are new? Um, and again, just the t-shirt thing. Um, we, sometimes we've in invited people to purchase t-shirts from Calvary and you'd be surprised at how much they enjoy doing that. Um, and just getting some recognition out there. Um, the one on the left, the flannels, those are from our houseboat trip that we take with high school students. And we built a shirt budget in because we knew that that was an important way um, for people to feel kind of that, um, as, as people who are on mission with your, as your team members, they just like having a t-shirt that matches feels, um, important and it just kind of helps rally people a little bit differently. So I just wanted to show you some of those examples. Um, and I also brought with me, um, a couple of things. So this is what we've got as our first time guest gifts right now. Um, we ordered a whole bunch of them so that we can have them on hand. But a couple of weeks ago, we had kids bring friends to church and we thought that was so cool. And I thought, oh, they do not need a fancy coffee mug. So I ordered some cheapo water bottles on Amazon and put a little sticker on them. So this now when a kid, because I didn't want to turn them away, so I gave them a coffee mug. But now if a kid brings a friend to church and they hear the announcement, I mean, they're sitting in church too. And they heard the announcement. If you're a first time guest, stop by the welcome desk. And these, it was the same night. And these two sweet girls, one is in fifth grade or fourth grade, brought her friend and the other one is in middle school. And so now I just got a sticker with our Calvary C on it and put it on a little water bottle. And as a mom of kids in soccer, um, you can never have too many uh, water bottles like this. So I figured that was an easy way. Actually, everybody uses water bottles like this. I mean, that's an, a, a pretty inexpensive way to just offer something to people um, as a first time guest at their church. All right, I talk really fast. I'm, I'm sorry for that. And I talked a lot here. So I'm curious to hear um, what the rest of you feel about welcoming people. What um, either what are your churches doing or what, what questions do you have about uh, hospitality? Okay, a question that I have for you, um, how often do you train your volunteers? Um, because I'm assuming with connection card or just visits and some people will say, hey, I'd like to learn to be a greeter. So then do you take them aside um, and one-on-one -on -one, or do you kind of do a, a mini session with a few people or just curious what you do at Calvary? Yeah, that's an awesome question. And I, um, I feel like post COVID, I'm still trying to figure out what's going to work best. Um, for us right now, we're planning a big um, hospitality team rally for May, because for us, summer is a pretty big time um, with Calvary at the Lake. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try that this year. We did it last year during to kind of come back from COVID. So our church didn't open until Memorial Day weekend. And so <clears throat> at the beginning of May, we said, come back and um, let's talk about the importance of hospitality. And it was great. We had almost 200 people or 150 people come. Wow. Maybe it wasn't 200, maybe like 150. Um, it was a lot of people and they were very enthusiastic. And so we thought, okay, the energy of that, we want to capture again this year. So it's kind of both. And I think that's a one-time thing to kind of get people um, excited about it. But I also do just kind of one-on-one -on -one talk to people. Um, my goal is to set up more of kind of a, a mentoring type of thing or uh, um, have kind of team leaders who would then train 
new people. So I'm not quite there yet, but that's my hope. Thank you. I have to give a little camp shout out here because Nathan Mugas and I worked at Bible camp together. And I think, I do think um, we try to, one of the things, if any of you have been on Bible camp staffs, a lot of camps really focus on that energy as you, you welcome people. For us, we would hand out um, chocolate chip cookies to parents and families when they came to our main part. And that really stuck out with me as I, and I try to think about those kinds of things as as I'm planning to welcome people here, you know, if maybe it is food, you know, people love food. So if you have um, treats setting out for people that sends a different kind of welcome than it does um, even to have nothing, but just to have your energy level, you know, and maybe it's not quite over the top, like it is at camp, that could be a little intimidating to people, but I think there is something to that as well. So well, Katie, you talked about um, the follow-ups and um, you have that lead to next steps gathering. Is that like a precursor to an actual new member connection class or is that what you call your new member connection class? Yeah, great question. Um, a few years ago, we uh, migrated away from calling it a new member class in part because um, we felt like engagement was a bigger goal than membership. And um, I think now even more than previously, people are more interested in just staying connected to your church. I don't know if membership means the same as it did years ago. I don't know. Maybe it does for some people. Um, and so, yes, that is uh, becoming a member is an option at the Next Steps gathering, but it's not a requirement to attend. So we've got people who come to those gatherings and we will actually give them a list of potential next steps. So um, Sometimes it's a large group service project and that's an easy one to say, hey, would you like to come to this on this date? You can help participate. Um, sometimes it's a small group. It could be a volunteer of some sort, a, um, a greeter. Being a greeter is an important role, but it's also a pretty easy role to step into because um, to tell someone, oh, your, your job is to be the first face of welcome they see and to hold that door open for people. Um, that's a pretty... A pretty easy way to, for people to engage as well. I liked what you said too about um, recognizing um, people, new, new uh, visitors, but now we want to guests. I like the name guests or the word guests versus visitors. Mm -hmm. I find sometimes when we're doing service projects, and we do get more volunteers who actually are not members. It's easier to say, well, who's new today? And then we cheer mm -hmm. everybody on. And it's just, yeah. so how do we do that in church where we don't um, maybe scare people away? <laughs> how do you welcome people as guests without scaring them away? Yes, because we have some, and again, it's training as some people, it's, it's just comical. We had a gentleman a couple of weeks ago and I was getting ready um, to go into worship and he comes and he runs to this couple and he's got our visitor log. And so in this case, he knew the people, but it's training our people to uh, that happy medium of not being too aggressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's like, uh, be welcoming, but not creepy. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what you said. We know this guy. So I think it's a matter of like, like you said too, I love just gathering everyone back and again, I feel like I'm fairly new in my role because I started and then COVID hit. COVID. And I was doing, I was on the phone a lot and that's how I was interacting. But um, I'm super excited that now more people are back and then just pulling everybody together. We have a lot of new people who are excited about helping too, but yeah, so that's a great media. place to be in. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited. Love it. And what was the name of the company of uh, that sign? I know that we have a resource um, at Good Shepherd too, but um, yeah, the it's, that you order. it's pop signs. And I'll have John send out the, the link or Kate, maybe you can Google it and, and put it in the chat if you wouldn't mind. Um, and honestly, I didn't, I Googled for hours to find, like, how do you, how do you describe that? <laughs> Church parking lot, sign, waterproof. I mean, I think I tried a zillion different combinations of things. <laughs> um, I tried messaging some other churches, some big churches that used them. Um, after we went to the Orange Conference, I saw them and I thought, okay, maybe somebody can tell me <laughs> where they make these. I looked to see if their brand was on there. Anyway, I've been very happy with, with pop signs. Um, it pays to order their shipping cost. 
they get you in the shipping. So it pays to order a bunch of them at once um, okay. because that's uh, it's a little more cost effective. My experience also shows me that the smaller signs are better. They, they're a little more durable. Um, I ordered a brand new, beautiful sign that Kate designed. Yeah, there we go. John's got one in there. It's blurry. <laughs> Um, a big sign at the lake and a great well-intentioned family dropped it. You know, they didn't mean to, and then it cracked and we used it once. So these smaller ones are a little easier for small hands to hold. And Kate, I'm sure we could put those designs on the open network for people. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask if, if that's possible. So that way it's just kind of a drag and drop order for, for people who want to use them. Yeah, for sure. Um, we just created, and they have some that you can order, like the smile at Sunday one, and um, we're glad you're here. Those are just generic signs that the company produces, but we could put the ones that Kate created that are the right dimensions, just available for people to order. The sticker company I found is called Sticker Mule, and that's also been a good one to use. Um, in my experience, they have a lot of sales. So they'll say, okay, you can buy 50 stickers for $29. And I will just order that sale every time I see them go on sale. Um, and then I have a bunch on hand and we throw those things on everything. Like we had a council retreat where we put the stickers on notebooks for people and we just bought the notebooks at Target. So again, just kind of people love that kind of stuff, you know, whether they're brand new or they've been around for a while to give them that little perk of something free is, is, uh, is good. I was going to mention this too, if you're a reader, I know not everybody likes to read for ideas, but I read these two books. This one is called The Comeback Effect. Um, and I sent these links to John too, so he can link to them. Um, the subtitle is How Hospitality Can Compel Your Church's Guests to Return. And this one is called People Are the Mission and How Churches Can Welcome Guests Without Compromising the Gospel. And I found both of those to be excellent resources. For me, I like to read and I like to just get ideas they took some great um, stories from the Bible and tied them into why hospitality is important. And so I think that's a really helpful thing too. We've used those anecdotes a few times, um, which I've given to our preachers and had asked them to weave into trainings and that sort of thing. So what we've done too uh, with our volunteers, especially our greeters, uh, we've had some wonderful stories that have been shared um, by a church member. And one of them, last summer was from a young girl. She was probably 13, 14 and was teaching Bible school. And so she had this incredible story to share because she had, she's a close friend of like a 90 year old man in the neighborhood. So she shared her experience with this guy, this older gentleman, and he was so passionate about the story. So he created a letter to her. And so we created that, put it in a document. So when we have new greeters, we'll say, we want you to read this because this oh, is yeah. the type of impact that you can make on someone else's life. And they read it. And every time they read it, they start to cry. And then, but now we're working on gathering some more stories so that we can tell our greeters, this is why you are integral part of the, our greeting team or a hospitality team. And it, it has made a difference. So That's that a great idea. It makes, makes a huge difference. Yeah. I love it. I love those stories. Those are hugely important. Actually, I was just at lunch with a friend. And we ran into two Calvary people who met at the welcome desk. I kid you not, I can't make them up. They, um, they both were from North Dakota. And if you're from North Dakota, you know that if you meet someone from North Dakota, you're, you've got a strong connection. And so I remember seeing them this Sunday that they connected. And this woman named Christy, who is at our welcome desk a lot, she said, can I get your, she said, I'm, I, can I get your name and phone number? I mean, these other people had been at church maybe twice um, and they were having lunch together today. Nice. So those stories of like the, the connections, those first connections, they definitely matter. Katie, I made a note about dedicate, and maybe you touched on this. I don't know if you did or not, but you have dedicate, you have a dedicated room for volunteers oh, on yeah. Sunday where people meet and they have treats and, and drinks and whatever. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that and kind of why you do that? Yeah, so this kind of came about um, before we had our renovated space um, at Christmas time and Easter, we had a hospitality room for volunteers. And um, just to kind of remind them that they are so important to the mission of what we do. And so we had extra special treats um, for them. We provided them at Christmas time. It was like, come in here to grab a sandwich um, so that you can get a 
something substantive. And then that led us when we did our building planning to say, we need a hospitality room. So we have a room with lockers um, so people can lock up their bags or coats if they want to. We've only lost keys twice <laughs> and had to break into the locks, but that's okay. We knew that would happen. Um, and it's got a refrigerator in there and um, a sink. And then um, it's also where I hang up all our name tags. So people come and they know um, they can get their name tag. Um, we use lanyards with um, and a name tag that says worship, connect, serve, and it has our logo on it. And um, then they can just come back and find their name tag each week. So yeah, the hospitality room is something that um, I hope to even utilize more as we get more volunteers. It could be a great huddle space. I have not done that real well yet, but that's another goal I have is to get volunteers huddle. Um, just to remind everybody why we're here, um, what the mission is when we start each worship service. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody. Thank you. Yeah, does anyone have any other questions or thoughts that they want to want to jump in with? Any any barriers you guys kind of come up against that like we would love to do this, but you know, here's what we run into. I think it's all great. I think it's all great information and I'd like to share it with my team. Will we be able to rewatch this with our team? Yeah. Or uh, Katie, can you send us your notes? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. John will send you a PDF that kind of gives the five tips that we okay. just talked okay. about here. Yep. Um, That's all I need. And yeah, and I think it will be recorded. So you can have that too. Okay, great. Yep, it's recorded. Cool. Quick, quick question, Noah. Uh, one of the things we've wondered about is these webinars get to be, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, one of the things we wondered about is, as you work with, say, your hospitality team, if Katie were to produce a, a five-minute video you could show to them and then have conversation, would that be a helpful tool uh, for your team, Noah? Yeah, I was thinking that we could probably rewatch uh, this, but yeah, that might be more conducive. I'm, I'm more concerned about that PDF or worksheet because I think I have the general gist and I wrote down notes, but I'd like to go back to like a worksheet or some, something real simple to just walk through them and say, all right, we're going to tackle this and this and this and this. Yeah, um, perfect. Yeah. So awesome. I put the link to the PDF that she walked through in the comments. So if you just click on that link, it'll download it to the device that you're on. Um, and I'll okay. also email it out to you guys as well. Great. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm all about it. I'm like, let's go. Let's get the signs and the lanyards and, um, you know, right. so. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan, you were going to jump in with something there. Yeah, I had a question too. I was curious about, because, you know, I uh, follow you guys some on social media at Calvary there too. And I'm curious how that. Because I feel like your welcome kind of spills into the social media sphere too. Yeah. Right? I mean, those signs and stuff. Uh, I think you utilize those really well in, you know, in getting the word out and invitation out on a pretty regular basis. How, how does yeah, that we're... happen? How you know? I mean, you must be pretty well coordinated on it, right? Yes. Again, I'm going to shout out Kate who uh, helps uh, make all of this happen. Um, but we, we do, we're like sneaky, not so sneaky about that. Um, when we, when I ask kids to take their picture or families or whatever, Hey, hold this sign. Let me take your picture. They know that when I'm coming towards them, I'm probably <laughs> going to take their picture. Um, and now people are okay with that. And then we do work it into our social media pretty regularly so that people can kind of catch the familiarity of it. Um, you know, throw your church's logo on something like that. And then it, it causes people to just have that recognition um, as they're seeing it. So yes, we do coordinate that. We just ordered um, our Easter ones. Let me show you. They're in my office here. So we have, we have Easter with Calvary for our, our photo booth um, and happy Easter. And then we, we did um, some for Mother's Day too. So we've got World's Best Mom. 
and happy Mother's Day, right? So you got people who come and will want to take their picture in front of, you know, our photo booth, our first time we did a photo booth was a curtain that we hung on the wall <laughs> um, and it was real simple and we just had some homemade signs um, but people love to have their picture taken and so now um, that's a volunteer role so on Easter or Christmas or Mother's Day there will be someone there who will just take your picture and they will then we'll save a lot of those and then use them throughout the year in a lot of different ways VBS we did that this year for VBS for the first time too so it's a it's a little investment but like um, like Happy Mother's Day, we can use this every year as long as it's alive and with us. <laughs> um, so we tried to make them a little more evergreen, so to speak. Yeah, Nathan, I would add to kind of your question, uh, or not question, but inquiry, is it, just that I think in many ways, um, the sermon begins in the parking lot, but for some people in this kind of hybrid church world, mm -hmm. The sermon really begins online. You know, when you think about people who attend our church, many of them, if they're new, they've checked us out online for weeks, months, even years before they ever step foot into our building. So I think that online presence you're talking about is, is, is an important one to think about how do we coordinate um, that hospitality all the way out um, to that online world. Great point. I think it, I think in addition to plants of seed, I, um, I worked with this young woman, um, she's part of our, our youth works crew in 2015 when we were in Montana and she followed us on Facebook. Thank you, John, for, we had a good Facebook presence and she reached out to me and moved back here and um, I met her again uh, a couple of weeks ago and they are going to be married here in October. So you just, awesome. part of that was that online presence and just reaching out and that relationship. So um, it's really important. Social media is very important too. Oh man, a whole nother webinar, John. There you go. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Take a look at our <laughs> calendar. Um, one thing I want to jump in there too, Katie, you don't walk around with a high quality camera and like yeah. make everyone with lights and everything. Like, can you just walk through the process on literally how you capture those pictures? You know, I'm always yeah, going back to the how yeah. and the what. For sure. I used to. In fact, I asked for a really expensive flash for Christmas a couple of years ago that my husband lovingly bought me that I hardly use because uh, let's face it, we all take pictures with our cell phones. And um, for $12, I invested in some filters that I purchased on Etsy that can make um, pictures look really great. And so now that I have Kate, she's a wizard. So she can do lots more with photos than I could before. But that's how I started was just trying to add a little filter and you don't want to, I mean, we're not trying to say we want to produce a false image, but it like, it makes a difference when you kind of just tweak it just a little bit, it catches people's eyes a little bit differently. So yeah, cell phone photos all the way. Yeah. So yeah, cell phone photos. I mean, I think about our, like, my iPhone, you go to portrait mode, it, it, it blurs that background really nicely. You got this cute kid holding a sign saying smile at Sunday. Like that's all it takes. And it just kind of, mm -hmm. it just really ups your, your online presence. I love it. Well, thank you everybody uh, for being a part of the this webinar. And thank you, Katie, uh, for leading us all in the conversation. Uh, one more time, what are the five the five steps. Uh, assume that the sermon starts in the parking lot. Recognize new people are in the room. Create an easy, low pressure next step. Uh, choose an obvious place to welcome people and follow up in a timely manner. Awesome. 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 Well, if you have any further conversation or you want to have, or you get off this Zoom call and you go, oh, I wanted to ask this, please reach out to John, to Katie, to myself. We'd love to have more conversation. Um, and uh, anything from online to uh, silly things like how do I order the signs or filters or whatever it is, we just want to be a resource to help you um, continue to take the steps that we can all be churches that are better welcoming to people who aren't currently in our churches. Um, so thanks for being on the webinar today. John, one more time, the next webinar is? 
Next webinar is April April 21st at 2 p.m. So watch your emails for the links and send those to your teams. Um, anybody can be on these calls. We just want to help each other out. Yep. And Hans, before we're done, would you pray us out too? You bet. You bet. Uh, let me pray for you all. Good and gracious, God, uh, you've given us this big gift called the church. And over the last two years, we've been through ups and downs and we've been through the ringer. And so, God, I uh, just give thanks for the courage, for the strength, for the patience, um, and for uh, these really great leaders who have endured a lot over the last couple of years. Um, God, we have a huge opportunity right now to reach people that, um, who th that uh, aren't being reached by the church, to offer a welcome, uh, a hospitable place um, where they can come to know of your grace and your love. Help us. Uh, as we uh, as we do our planning, as we get ready for Easter and for the summer, um, to maybe take some new steps, to take some risks um, in such a way that we can open our doors even wider. God, I give thanks for these leaders, and I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.